Welcome to EV Tech Explained. In this video, I'll simplify and explain the complex topic of lithium ion battery degradation and how it relates to your electric vehicle. Specifically, I'll begin by defining what degradation is, and I'll explain why you care about it in the context of your electric vehicle before moving on to explaining how de degradation occurs, what these specific degradation mechanisms are, and their root causes. Finally, I'll conclude by explaining how simple actions can limit the battery degradation which occurs within your electric vehicle. Battery degradation is an irreversible loss of the ability of a battery to store charge or a reduction of the rate at which electrical energy can be accepted or released from the battery. If we look at how battery capacity typically fades over time, we see three distinct phases. The first is stabilisation. Initially, capacity fades quickly, but the rate of capacity fade rapidly decays as the solid electrolyte interphase, which we'll explain later, stabilises and the anode becomes less reactive with the electrolyte. The second region is the pseudolinear region. Although battery degradation is a non-linear process, Following the stabilisation phase, if usage conditions do not differ significantly, capacity fades in a roughly linear manner until we reach the knee point, where the behaviour changes and we will enter what I call the Valley of Doom. Once we enter the Valley of Doom, positive feedback of degradation mechanisms results in an increasing rate of capacity loss and ultimately cell failure occurs very quickly. So, when is battery degradation occurring? Well, all the time. During charge, during discharge, and unlike mechanical systems, degradation also occurs whilst the battery is at rest. The measurable effects are usable capacity loss and resistance rise. So, you might ask, why do I care about capacity loss and resistance rise? Whilst it may be obvious that capacity loss will result in a reduction of usable energy, and hence a reduction in range, it may not immediately be obvious that capacity loss will also reduce the charge rate when replenishing a significant percentage of your range during a fast charge. If you are aiming to restore 80% of your original certified range through fast charging, as capacity is lost, the average state of charge throughout the fast charge will be increased, thereby typically leading to a reduced average fast charge rate. A rise in resistance results in a decrease of efficiency, thereby increasing heat generation for a given power output and increasing overall energy consumption. If the vehicle power output is limited by the power capability of the battery, a rise in resistance will also reduce peak power. This will initially be observed as an increase of state of charge, below which the power is derated, or a reduction of time that peak power can be maintained. The maximum charge rate will be reduced, as will charging efficiency, thus the energy cost per unit distance travelled will increase over time. Let's use a simplified schematic of a typical lithium ion cell to explain how degradation occurs. Our simplified schematic shows a single graphite anode particle, a single NMC cathode particle connected to an aluminium current collector, and these two particles are held apart by an electrically insulating, ionically conductive separator material. We will incur degradation if we have a loss of active anode sites within which we can insert lithium ions, or if we lose cyclable lithium from our cell, if we have a loss of active cathode sites within which we can insert lithium ions, if the movement of lithium ions becomes more difficult, and if our electrical resistance increases. These items represent our degradation mechanisms. Our degradation map shows how root causes of degradation link to particular degradation modes and the degradation mechanisms these modes invoke, as well as the directly measurable effects of degradation, namely capacity loss 
and resistance rise. Through our capacity loss measurements, we can estimate the loss of cyclable lithium as well as the loss of active anode material and the loss of active cathode material. The loss of active anode and cathode material will also be seen within our observed resistance rise as a greater power output per unit of active material will be required to deliver the same overall power output. From our resistance rise measurements, we can determine how much more difficult it has become for lithium ions to move between the anode and cathode, and as a result, how much additional heat will be generated. Let's begin by looking at anode degradation. A major factor in the degradation of lithium ion cells containing graphite anodes, which is the vast majority of lithium ion cells, is the solid electrolyte interphase. The solid electrolyte interphase, or SEI for short, is a stabilizing, passivating, porous layer which forms on the surface of the graphite anode upon exposure to the electrolyte with which it is unstable. The SEI on the anode is much like the formation of aluminium oxide on the surface of aluminium. Aluminium is highly reactive with atmospheric oxygen and when pristine aluminium is exposed to a typical environment, a passivating dull layer of aluminium oxide forms on the surface preventing further reactions. The reaction between the anode surface and the electrolyte to form the SEI results in the consumption of electrolyte, including lithium, thereby resulting in both loss of cyclable lithium and loss of active anode material. Over time, further reactions between the anode surface and SEI with the electrolyte result in the SEI becoming thicker and denser, which in turn makes it more challenging for lithium ions to enter and exit the anode. The increased thickness of the SEI also results in a reduction of porosity of the overall electrode. At high state of charge and high charge rates, it is possible for the lithium ions to not fully dissolve it from the solvents in the electrolyte prior to entering the anode, resulting in damage to the layered graphite structure. This can lead to parts of the anode becoming more difficult or impossible to access, thus reducing active anode material and making ion transport more difficult. High currents, particularly when maintained for long time periods, result in significant mechanical stress within the anode. This mechanical stress can result in the anode particles cracking. When a particle cracks, an element of the anode can become detached, forming a non-electrically active island. Thus, we lose useful anode capacity, as well as the lithium ions contained within that detached anode island. In addition, when a particle cracks, a fresh anode surface is exposed to the electrolyte, resulting in the formation of additional solid electrolyte interphase, further consuming usable lithium ions, reducing active anode sites and reducing kinetics. In particular systems, the SEI is brittle. At high state of charge, the anode can expand by up to 13%, and under these conditions the solid electrolyte interface itself can crack or decompose at high temperatures. The lost solid electrolyte interface will reform, resulting in additional lithium ion consumption. At high state of charge, low temperature and high charge rates, we can experience lithium dendrite formation on the surface of the anode. During charge, lithium ions are transferred from the cathode to the anode. At low temperature and high state of charge, the rate at which lithium ions diffuse from the anode surface to the centre of the particle is reduced. If the rate of lithium ion transfer to the anode is greater than the rate at which lithium ions can diffuse away from the surface of the particle, lithium ions will accumulate at the particle surface and metallic lithium will form on the particle surface. At this point, the lithium ions will preferentially bond with the lithium metal rather than being inserted into the graphite anode, resulting in the formation of long, spiky stems of metallic lithium. This results in significant loss of usable lithium from the electrolyte, and these lithium metal dendrites can puncture the separator, 
enabling electrical conduction directly between the anode and cathode, or in other words, create a short circuit. This will lead to a very large current flow and temperature rise within the cell, which will eventually lead to thermal runaway. Thus, lithium dendrite formation will result in significant degradation and major safety issues too. Between 0 and 100% state of charge, the volume of the anode will change by approximately 13%. The fatigue caused by repeated expansion and contraction of the anode will cause some loss of contact with the electrically conductive carbon binder, resulting in an increase of electrical resistance. Our anode current collector is made of copper, whilst our cathode is made of aluminium. These materials are selected due to their electrical conductivity, stability and electrochemical stability window. The graph shows the anode, cathode and overall cell voltage versus state of charge, where 0 represents 0% state of charge and 1 represents 100% state of charge. At very low state of charge, the anode potential rapidly rises and the cathode potential rapidly drops. Thus, at very low state of charge, the aluminium and copper current collectors can fall outside of their electrochemical stability window. If this happens, dissolution of the current collectors will occur, resulting in copper and aluminium particles transferring to the electrolyte. Following copper dissolution into the electrolyte, a subsequent charge will result in the precipitation of copper onto the anode surface as metallic dendrites, which pose similar safety concerns as lithium dendrites. The reduced current collector thickness and or surface contact area will result in increased electrical resistance. The active copper will also likely form additional compounds within the solid electrolyte interface causing it to become unstable. Additionally, at high temperatures, the carbon-based binder will react with the electrolyte and decompose, resulting in further loss of electrical contact and rise in electrical resistance. As described with the anode, the cathode current collector will also experience dissolution into the electrolyte at very low state of charge, thereby reducing electrical conductivity and increasing resistance. Further, like the anode, at high temperatures, the binder will react with the electrolyte and decompose. Some of the degradation modes experienced by cathode materials differ substantially with different types of cathode material. In this video, we will restrict discussion to layered transition metal oxides such as NMC and NCA, as used by most long-range electric vehicles. A surface film does form on the surface of the cathode due to impurities within the electrolyte reacting with the active material of the cathode. However, this is much less of an influential factor than on the anode. This surface film increases in thickness and density through usage, particularly when the operating temperature is increased. Under high current loads, the mechanical stress induced by lithium-ion motion can also crack cathode particles. However, unless island formation occurs, the impact of particle cracking on the cathode side is less severe than on the anode side. Electrical resistance will rise and lithium-ion kinetics will be reduced, however surface film formation will be limited and no significant lithium will be consumed. Transition metal oxide cathodes suffer from dissolution of the transition metals into the electrolyte at high temperatures and high state of charge. Manganese within an NMC cathode is particularly susceptible to transition metal dissolution. Once in the electrolyte, the manganese will typically deposit on the anode surface during the subsequent charge events where it can form dangerous dendrites or react with the SEI to form additional electrolyte decomposition products on the anode surface. As the cathode is charged and discharged, it undergoes phase transitions which result in structural changes. Over time, and particularly when subject to high currents, the structural changes lead to a misalignment of the cathode particles with respect to one another, resulting in a loss of accessible cathode sites 
and more challenging lithium ion diffusion through the cathode structure. From this figure, given the number of different degradation mechanisms shown, it is evident why battery degradation is a complex and not fully understood process. Returning to our degradation map, we can now align different degradation root causes with different degradation modes and different degradation modes with different degradation mechanisms. Let's begin by aligning our root causes to our degradation modes. Over time, without any usage, our SEI layer will continue to grow due to the continued undesired reactions between the electrodes and electrolyte. Storage or usage at high temperatures will result in accelerated SEI growth and above a certain temperature threshold we will experience decomposition of the electrolyte, of the solid electrolyte interface and of the binder material which holds the electrodes together. For certain cathodes we will experience dissolution of transition metals from the cathode into the electrolyte. Holding or using the cell at very high state of charge will also result in decomposition of electrolyte, solid electrolyte interface and binder material. High state of charge will also increase the likelihood of transition metal dissolution, exfoliation of the graphite anode by ions which have not fully desolvated and lithium plating which results in lithium dendrite formation. Storage or usage at very low state of charge can result in dissolution of the copper anode current collector into the electrolyte and the volume change of the electrodes under very low state of charge conditions can also increase the likelihood of loss of electrical contact between the electrodes and current collectors. High current outputs and inputs will cause localised heating and mechanical stress which lead to increased solid electrolyte interface growth and SEI decomposition under particular conditions. High current charging increases the likelihood of exfoliation of the graphite anode and continued high current usage increases the likelihood of structural disordering within the cathode. Use of high currents will increase the rate of state of charge change and hence the rate of mechanical and structural change increasing the likelihood of structural disordering and particle cracking. Charging at low temperatures risks inducing lithium plating of the anode and additional energy cycles will cause SEI growth and increase the likelihood of structural disordering. Let's move on to aligning each degradation mode with the degradation mechanisms. A loss of usable lithium from the system is caused by SEI growth, electrolyte decomposition, SEI decomposition and lithium plating. Loss of active anode material is caused by graphite exfoliation, anode current collector dissolution, loss of electrical contact with the current collector and particle cracking. Loss of active cathode material is caused by binder material decomposition, transition metal dissolution, structural disordering of the cathode, cathode current collector dissolution, loss of electrical contact with the current collector and particle cracking. Reduced lithium ion kinetics are caused by SEI growth, binder decomposition, transition metal dissolution, graphite anode exfoliation, current collector dissolution on both the cathode and anode sides and particle cracking. Increased electrical resistance is caused by binder decomposition, structural disordering of the cathode, loss of electrical contact and particle cracking, loss of cyclable lithium, anode active material and cathode active material all result in measured capacity loss. Loss of anode and cathode active materials, reduced lithium ion kinetics and increased electrical resistance all result in an increase in measured cell resistance. If you wanted to reduce the battery degradation in your EV, you're really in control of four root cause conditions. Time spent at high temperature, usage of very high and very low state of charge, and power both in the charge and discharge directions.
Reducing the exposure of the battery to high temperatures can be as simple as your choice of parking location. If possible, do not park the vehicle in direct sunlight on a hot day, park in a shaded or covered environment instead. Aggressive or high speed driving will cause the battery to heat up. Waiting for the battery to cool down prior to charging will help to reduce degradation. Efforts should be made to reduce the period of time spent at 100% charge. Try to limit your maximum battery charge to between 80 and 90% for day-to-day -day usage and avoid charging to 100% and subsequently leaving the vehicle parked for a long period of time, particularly in hot climates. Avoid fully depleting your battery charge and aim to stay above 15-20% to 20 state of charge in typical day-to-day -day usage. When using high charge or discharge power, if your vehicle allows, precondition your battery prior to use. Avoid fast charging when not required. Using a slower charge will extend the life of your battery. Car manufacturers put a tremendous amount of effort into maximising fast charge rates whilst ensuring the battery degradation caused by fast charging is not excessive. Nevertheless, fast charging will incur additional degradation to slow charging. If you've made it to the end of this video, I hope you now understand more about battery degradation. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. In my next video, I'll take a closer look at Tesla's V3 supercharger system and how it compares to what the rest of the EV industry has to offer. As usual, you can find the sources for this video in the description box below. If you found this video helpful, please like and share the video and subscribe for future videos. Also, please consider using my Tesla referral link, which is in the description box below, if you're thinking about buying a new Model S, Model X, or Model 3.